Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of English no Cru Radio. I took the lead today because Foster was a little bit stuck. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Alexia. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of English no Cru Radio. My name's Foster, and I'm here with Alexia. Hi. Alexia, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. What about you? I am doing wonderfully. Thanks for asking. And today we have another listener question. So we asked for your questions and we are answering them live on the air. Yes. And if you want to do the same thing, just visit our website and it's on the contato page. Yeah. Visit our website. You can find out how to send us an audio question. Yeah, if you don't, you just ask Filippi because we have the WhatsApp right there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's easy. Send us a question. We'll try to give you a relatively intelligent answer. Yeah. Anyways, today we have a question from Paulo. Would you like to take a listen? Yes. Hi, Alex and Foster. It's nice to be talking to you guys. And I wanted to use this audio feature to just share a couple of talks that I have and, and just ask a question or two. Uh, so basically I've been speaking English fluently, I think for the past seven years, but I only really had a chance to start actively like, like speaking it a year and a half ago because I, I got the chance to work in a project in the company that I work on where I had to interact with like people from Canada and Australia. So pretty much all of my time was dedicated to this project and I could just speak, I had to speak a lot of English. Uh, so I think that helped me a lot in improving my pronunciation and how confident I am in, at speaking it. Uh, but yeah, it's something that never went away is my accent or my concern with my accent. I'm not really sure if it, if it matters or not. So I wanted to ask you guys this question, should I be working on improving it? Or is, is this something that doesn't really matter? I, I'm not really sure where the line is drawn between improving your pronunciation and stop bothering about your accent. Uh, and just another quick tip, like can you guys give me or give us some tips on how to improve your business English? So the business side where you have like those more complex business related words uh, to work on. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic question questions to be more accurate thank you paulo okay so this is incredibly similar to another question we received from ismael and this shows how people are very very like concerned about it yeah so ismael asked a more general question about the line between accent and pronunciation And we offered a lot of our thoughts about that. But I think Paulo's case gives us a really good chance to be more specific about what this can look like in real life. What do you think? I think it's perfect because he, sh he was a storyteller, right? So he showed us... Um, when he started to, stu to study, when he started to feel more confident about it and why, because he had to use it for work. And then nowadays he doesn't know if he should be worried about his accent or not and what we think about it. This is the first part. Yeah, I think we can just focus on the first part today because then he asked a question about business English, which is a big topic. So I have a few just first impressions. I believe he said he has been only actively speaking English for almost a year and a half. Yeah. And my God, Paulo, your English is phenomenal. Yeah. For a year and a half. Yes. Really, really impressive. Keep up the good work, my friend. Secondly, he's asking... He said, I believe he said, what never went away was my accent. And then he corrected himself and said, well, my concern about my accent, which I thought was super interesting. So two different things there. 
because to be honest, Paulo, your accent is fantastic. Like in my personal uh, humble opinion, you do not have much of an accent. If I was speaking to you, I would not know that you were Brazilian. I would probably know you're not a native English speaker, but I would think, okay, this is a professional that speaks English more or less perfectly. Yeah. Um, so, Foster, I want you to understand a little bit because you said, like, for me, his accent is perfect. I mean, is there a perfect accent? No, absolutely not. Thank you for <laughs> correcting me. Uh, his pronunciation is perfect and his accent is very neutral. neutral in the sense that most Brazilians have a very specific set of kind of tendencies where I can immediately see like, ah, that's a Brazilian speaking English. And he does not have any of that. Okay. Which is a cool feature. Yes. And if it's a cool, it is a cool feature when we are talking about work, right? Because he said that he was using a lot of his English because of his work. And he was talking to people from Australia and Canada. And especially Australians, they have uh, a very, very strong accent. They do. Yes. Good day, mate. Yes. <laughs> okay. So when we are thinking about accents in a professional context, it's a real thing. The stakes are higher. I would say the less, the better. Right? The less accent, the better? Yeah. Okay. The, the truth is linguistic discrimination is a very real thing. If you have two people with identical CVs, identical levels of experience... 99% of the time, they are going to choose the person that speaks English with the most native accent. Yeah. So my question back to Paula would be like, are you concerned about your accent because of your work? It's because you want to apply to uh, a senior job. You want to get better Personally, what do you want to do with your accent? Because if the, the, the answer is, oh, no, I'm just worried because of me, that's fine. I mean, you are good to go. But if you are worried about a senior position or you want to become an exec executive or etc., yes, unfortunately, that's something that we had to talk about it. Yeah, something. Something. Yeah. Fechar boca com Lemmy, something. Yeah, so in most situations, when our students, when Brazilians are trying to apply for jobs in English and the job says, like, fluency in English is required, Paulo, you are good to go. With any, like, software job, no one is going to think, okay, this guy's English is not good enough for the job. You have, your foundation is perfect. Like Alexia said, I think the only way this could be something that affects you is if you are applying for either very senior level positions or an executive position or some position where you have to speak publicly a lot like for the company. In that case, I do think if you're competing with other people, if you're competing with native speakers, maybe that could be a factor. Yeah. But I think that's a super specific situation. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. It's very weird to think about it, right? Because that's one thing that it, it could happen to me. If I went to the United States looking for a job, yeah, I speak good English, right? But it would be between me and a native speaker. And for sure, the native speaker would get the job. Yeah. Yeah, so 
it's unfortunately this happens. Yeah. And there are a lot of different dynamics here, especially with the pandemic and the global economy has kind of moved online. A lot of companies are considering, oh, we can hire people from anywhere in the world. So we can hire a Brazilian and pay them less, or we can hire an American and pay them more, but they will speak English fluently. They understand the culture. So in that case, I think Paulo has a huge advantage because your English is impeccable. The only case that I could, like if you were applying for some really serious job, then I might consider, okay, there are a few small things with your accent that we can just reduce or improve just a little bit. Um, but honestly, it doesn't seem to be his case. No. And I think you're good to go. Yeah. So his second question is, it was about business English. I think that we can record a whole episode about it. Yes, we can definitely talk about business English all day. In the meantime, if you want to check out a lot of our resources, Alexia personally made a beautiful <laughs> guide to English business that has a ton of resources, links to all of our podcast episodes, cool tips. You can find that at our website. Just go to EnglishNewCrew.com. Or just click on our um, link here on this episode and it's right there. Yeah. Click on the link in the show notes. It's easy to find. We'll record another episode about business English. But in the meantime, go grab Alexia's English business guide. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you for the question, Paulo. Your English is amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> We love all of you. As always, keep up the good fight. And lose well. Bye. <laughs>